Let's say I have a programmer who doesn't comply with some specific naming conventions we have for coding. Well, first, as mentioned before, start with the communication box and be clear to the employee that we have a common understanding for all of them. Is the coding process known to the employee? Do we even have a set process for the employee to use? Are the principles and procedures within that process known and clear? Is there a set of guidelines for what good looks like? Are my expectations both known and clearly understood? And so on. You may notice the word clear keeps popping up. The communication box is really all about clarity. Does the information exist? Does it make sense? Does the employee understand it? Now, let's say this programmer does have all the communication items checked off. We're good with that box. Now, let's move to the training box. Are there job aids the employee can use to reference how to name code properly? Is there training or one-on-one -on -one coaching we can provide to develop the naming skills? Are we taking the time to reflect and debrief how the programmer is progressing? If the answer is no to any of these questions, we need to make sure those resources are indeed present. If the answer is yes, then are they being utilized? If not, use them. Assuming the training pieces are in place and have been utilized, now we need to check through the motivation box. Refer to the motivation materials in previous videos for a deeper understanding of why these items are in the motivation box. Ask and evaluate whether the team member perceives that he can actually use the proper naming conventions. This is vital. Motivationally speaking, it is permission to play. If the answer is no, then go back to the training box. Something's missing there. Through your conversations with them, does the team member perceive the inherent value and purpose of the naming process? Does it make sense to him? Is the performance you want aligned to the rest of the processes and the tasks the team member must do? If no to any of these questions, the programmer will lose any intrinsic motivation for doing the process the way you want it. So you need to facilitate discussions with him about why and what's in it for him, the company, and the team, etc. When delivered well, and see our feedback videos, Feedback provides a value of information to the team member that enables competence to improve. Improved competence increases motivation as long as the task doesn't become boring or tedious. So identify whether the extrinsic factors, the extrinsic reinforcements like rewards, recognition, and compensation are aligned with what you want as well. Often these extrinsic factors can actually undermine what you want by reinforcing alternative behaviors, or they can be so strong that the team member focuses on getting them or avoiding them to such a degree that the actual task and behaviors become secondary. So make sure these extrinsic factors are not so powerful that they derail your objectives. Finally, Validate you have in place all the tools and resources needed to properly name the code. Does the programmer have the right software? Does her computer have enough processing power, etc.? Again, this tool is so useful when applied up front before as tasks get underway. However, it is equally useful as a way of figuring out what to fix when something goes wrong. 